Hi, everybody. Welcome to Cocoon. So whether you are just starting your journey with us or you've been following us for some time, we want you to know of a new resource that we have posted on our website for you. So this is called the Birth Bundle, and this is a compilation of resources and links and recipes and checklists and anything and everything relating to your first, second, third, and fourth trimester, so when you, after you've had baby. Make sure to check it out under media on our website at cocoonyoga.com. Okay, so welcome. We are going to get started uh, in a wide knee child's pose. So I do wanna make sure as always that you have that prop. So a towel or a rolled up blanket, uh, even a pillow would work as well just to help fill space, especially for this first posture. We're gonna come down into a wide knee child's pose. So just untuck your toes and bring the big toes together to touch. And depending on how bountiful belly is right now, you will have to widen your knees to make space for your belly, okay? And then from there, gently lower yourself down. We're not gonna stay here for too long. And if you come down and you're feeling like it's a little too low, then bring the floor up to you by pulling in that prop. So you can put it under your forehead, under your armpits, whatever feels good for you. Please adjust always in each posture as you see fit. So coming down, settling into this space between your legs, extend your arms long, reaching your fingers forward, setting your sit bones back. Really encourage your torso to melt in between your legs. Really settle in there. And using your breath, you can help to do that. Taking a big abundant inhale to open and expand your rib cage. And then long, smooth exhale to melt and soften in between the space. And just keep moving through your breath with ease, with comfort. Concentrating on the breath here. And squirming and wiggling, finding little micro movements that you might need to find comfort. And only you know what that is gonna involve right now. So please modify, come out, take a breath, whatever you need. Two more slow cycles. Don't rush it. Expand and melt. And when you're ready, Slowly walking, walking, walking all the way up and come onto all fours and just womp your ankles out. Give them a little slap on the mat. Kind of feels good on the joint. Awesome. Sweep those feet around and we're gonna come to sit on your bum. So bring your feet together into bound angle here and encourage the knees to drop by kind of opening up the feet like you're reading a book. Let the knees be heavy and check your pelvis here, rolling it forward, sitting up nice and tall with your ears stacked over shoulders, shoulders over hips. Always pull in that prop again underneath your sits bones if you feel like you need a little bit of encouragement for that tall seat, it really helps. Okay, and then from here, hands on your shins or just simply resting on the mat. Start to roll in one direction. As you roll around, when you come back up through center, make sure you're not leaning back and activating your six pack. So just take nice deep circles, side, front, side, and straight up through center. And you can adjust your feet placement, again, according to what you need, what feels good for you and baby right now. <laughs> good, keep rolling. So we're going to talk a little bit today about words and the impact that they have, not just as you're birthing, even though birthing mamas tend to be quite suggestible to 
to what they hear around them. But if you're facing any challenge in life, how words can help you to overcome through what's called a mantra. One more cycle, and then we'll take it in the opposite direction. So words have a connotation and meaning. And when you use certain words like pain, that equates to suffering. And well, for birth, it doesn't have to be something of suffering. Uh, so using different words like a strong sensation <laughs> instead of pain, perhaps a wave, a rush instead of a contraction and simply just referring to that whole process as your birth instead of labor because labor kind of has a negative connotation. So thinking about words and how powerful they can be and impactful, especially during your birth last cycle around and we'll come right back up through center. Okay, still sitting up nice and tall. We're gonna sweep that left leg around. So bring the foot around behind you and rest the knee and the ankle down on the ground. Now you'll notice your left bum cheek comes up. That's great, no problem. And then we just want to set the right ankle and knee at like a 90 degree angle as well here. So 90 degree angles at all the joints. Rest your right hand down behind you, place your left hand on your hip, and let's start to roll around. And you don't have to flow with your breath here. If you wanna just pause, if something feels good, wanna get a nice long stretch, you can pause there, and then roll back around. And as you roll back in front and drop that sits bone towards the ground, you'll feel a big juicy stretch on the inside of the thigh, and just keep moving. Remember your pelvis is super shifty right now with all the relaxing moving through you. So moving away, guiding your body. How does it feel? Making sure it feels good. So a mantra in Sanskrit and yoga, we use this term called a mantra and that's just a repetitive um, words that you feed yourself, positive words, to encourage you through a challenge. That's all it is. Whether that challenge is getting you through sleep if you have sleep issues, using a mantra can help there as well. Or whether the challenge is your birth. Last cycle, setting your sit bone down, and we're gonna slowly rotate that foot back and around and come into a big, wide windshield wiper. We'll do the opposite side. So a mantra simply is just a repetition of those words over and over and over. It could be one word, two words, a phrase, a lyric, a poem, something that encourages you to keep going and overcome that challenge. All right, sweeping the feet around towards the right side now, creating that 90 degree angle at the joints. Don't worry if yours doesn't look like mine, just make sure it feels good. Left hand down, let's start to roll. And so when you repeat a certain cycle of positive words, that actually helps to remove the negative or the unhelpful words that might be popping up, like guilt, shame, fear, confusion, you know. They're all emotions and we all allow them to enter. They're all feelings and they're all relevant and valid, but we don't wanna sit with those unhelpful ones for too long, right? We want to move through them process them and then move through to those positive more helpful words so instead of I can't do this it's like an I can okay and what we do is use mantra so finding words that help encourage you to keep going um, could be some something as simple as I can do this I got this I got this I am strong or it could just be one word like strength 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 but it is repeated and that actually changes the rewiring in the brain if repeated enough. Last cycle. Good. And lowering down. Let's do that big windshield wiper action again. And then come to sit in your tall seat in that L shape. So really pull the pelvis forward, sit up tall, flex your toes, drawing them towards your nose and see if you can create 90 degrees at the hips. And if it's available for you, bring your arms up overhead. Ooh, it's hard. Not an easy pose to sit in and that's because we are using our core here. So I want you to check in. 
you're sitting up nice and tall, can you take a big breath into your belly and really feel that expansiveness in your belly like a balloon swelling? So your six pack isn't contracted right now to sit up tall. It is your core, your transverse is way deep down inside. That's giving you this height reaching up tall. So soften your belly muscles around the six pack area, the rectus abdominis and breathe there. One more cycle. <sighs> Looks like an easy pose, right? But it is not beautiful. And then we're going to lower the arms down. I want you to bend into the left knee and bring the foot, tuck it inside the right leg and then place the left hand down behind the left hip. So we're just gonna move through rock star. If you wanna keep your bum down on the ground, feel free to do so if it's too much pressure on your wrist. Spread those five fingers out and really root all five digits into the ground. When you're ready, on the inhale coming up, big side stretch. And then on your exhale, coming down and rainbow that arm over. Another side stretch. So just keep moving. If you want to pause, pause somewhere, no problem. You can do big arm circles if you want. Get creative with your movement. Tapping into that intuition. And maybe as you're concentrating here on this inward focus that we tend to do a lot in yoga, maybe you can come up with some words that help encourage you. What words speak to you? Is it, usually we want to center those words around our fears. So do you fear that you can't manage the pain, the sensations during your birth? Is that a fear? And if it is, maybe you can create a mantra around that. Last cycle coming to sit up nice and tall. And then we'll swap sides. Left leg goes long, right foot comes in and then right hand, really root down all five digits into the ground. When you're ready, side stretching. And so if it is about trust, trusting your body, I trust my baby, I trust my body, can be a great mantra. I trust my baby, I trust my body, I trust my baby, and repeating that over and over and over. Again, helping to clear away those unhelpful thoughts that can creep in. Sure, with any challenge, these unhelpful thoughts can come in. That's okay. With compassion, we're just going to gently clear them away <laughs> and fill it with those helpful words and helpful thoughts. <sighs> Encourage strong breath cycles with each movement. Always checking in. What do you need right now? What feels good? I'm going to do one last cycle. and come to sit up in your tall seat. All right, sweep that foot around and behind. We're gonna come up onto all fours. So stacking your shoulders over your wrists, stack your hips over your knees, and let's move through cat-cow. So as you do this, I want you to inhale, take a gaze up, and you can keep your back somewhat neutral here. We don't want to come into a really big arch of the spine, depending on how far along you are in your pregnancy. So rather just settle the shoulders down and gaze up. And then as you exhale here, you can really round your spine, drop the crown of your head to the floor, push up with your heart center really high to the sky and just keep moving. Inhale, neutral spine, set the shoulders, gaze up. And then exhale, roll it out. Really roll each vertebrae as you move through this cycle. Keep it fluid, warming up the spine. Close your eyes if that helps you to avoid distraction. One more cycle in and out. Take your time. Good. Meeting up in neutral spine when you're ready. I want you to curl the toes under, take your knees a little wide, and then walk yourself back and back and back. We're gonna ragdoll up into standing. So I want your bum to come up first, yeah. And then let your arms be heavy and head is heavy. Stack vertebrae upon vertebrae until you reach the top. All the way up and up and up. You notice I'm going slow. <laughs> good for the spine. 
Beautiful. And then you can just take a stroll to the top of your mat, finding mountain pose. <sighs> mountain pose is big, just like that seated staff pose where we had our arms overhead. This is a very active pose. So I want you to charge up the thighs, charge up all the way to your glute muscles. Yeah. Root all four corners of your feet down as if you're sending roots down into the floor and then lifting that energy up. And then here, make sure your bum isn't tucked under. Blossom the cheeks. Set your rib cage right over top of your pelvis and set your chin parallel to the floor. Last cue here, lift and lengthen up through the crown of your head and breathe. <sighs> Big abundance through the torso, opening through the spine gives a lot of opening and freedom for the breath to move through. So breathe there. Expansiveness. Freedom. One more cycle. Nice, right? All right, I'm gonna show you from the side view. You can stay where you are. From your mountain, we're gonna come into chair. So on your next inhale, sweep your arms up overhead, and then exhale, sit back into your chair pose. And you can sit as deep as you want to. It doesn't need to be super deep, okay? Um, but if your belly is more bountiful, then feel free to open up your stance a bit as you come down. <laughs> Blossom your bum again. Make sure the tail isn't tucked under. And if it's too much for you to have your arms up over your head, I get it. It, it is a lot. Just bring your hands down to your hips. No problem. All right. So I'm doing little bobs here because for me, my joints, my muscles, my bones, it likes little micro movements. I don't like to be super still for too long. So that's me. I want you to lower yourself down to the point, not of pain, right? Of slight discomfort, right? We're changing that connotation. <sighs> so that fire's burning up. It's swelling in the thighs. I feel it. I'm with you. Breathe with me. <sighs> Breathe into that area. <sighs> it's a challenge. So what can you feed your brain right now? What words of encouragement can you use to help get through this challenge, this physical challenge, similar to what you'll be feeling Maybe not with the same intensity though, during your birth. It is a challenge. So move into it. Don't move away from it. We're almost there. You've got this. Building up that strong foundation. Yes, crucial for your birth and for postpartum. Nice, strong foundation. All right, taking your hands to your hips. If they're not already there, I want you to stay low and take a giant step back with your right leg. So put the weight into your left foot and take a giant step back with your right leg. Straighten the legs, give it a little bit of a rest here. And we're gonna pivot that back foot so it's parallel to the back of your mat, just making sure that the belly is open to the side comfortably. All right, inhale, open your arms, front and back. Exhale, bend into that front knee. So it shouldn't be too fiery here. We're not in a really deep lunge, okay? So just stack the knee right over top of the ankle. Breathe. Warrior two. If you wanna flow with me, you can, or if you just wanna stay here, no problem. As you inhale, bring that back arm forward, exhale and pull it back like a bow and arrow. Inhale, like you're shooting. Pull it back, exhale. One more, inhale. Exhale, pull it back, good. Back in warrior two. Hands to your hips. We're gonna hop that back foot up slowly and find your mountain at the top of your mat. <sighs> Fiery. It's good though, see that as a positive thing. <sighs> One more breath cycle here. We'll do the same thing on the opposite side. Show you from the other side view here. All right, when you're ready, inhale, arms go up and over. Exhale, sit into your chair. Oh yeah, right back there. The fire doesn't take long before it starts to swell up. So I want you to really check in with all four corners of your feet and make sure you're not sitting just in your heels. Make sure all four corners of your feet are equally rooted into the mat. 
breathe, bob, make whatever minor adjustments you need to here to get through. What can you feed your brain? What helpful words can you offer it? Repeat them, rewire your brain, give it positivity, <sighs> empowerment, encouragement. Your body and your mind, your brain, they're connected. One more breath. Good, and then if your hands aren't already there, take them to your hips, stay low, put the weight into your right foot this time, and then take a giant step back with your left leg. All right, straighten the legs and get that back foot into position so the back foot is parallel to the back of your mat. Belly facing the side, inhale, open, exhale, bend into your front knee. So the front knee, again, is stacked. You just don't want it to come too far over the joint, that's all. So you just want it stacked right over top of the ankle or the heel. Are you breathing? If you'd like to flow through bow and arrow, inhale, bring that back arm forward. Exhale, draw back, nice strong arms, bright, active energy moving moving through them. Last one. Meet in warrior two. Take your hands to your hips and we're gonna hop that back foot forward. Shoop. Give it a little shake out at the top in mountain. Okay, so if you wanna step off of your mat for this or move sideways on it so you're um, you're not kind of stepping part on and part off of your mat. We're gonna do the sumo squatting. So when you're ready, join in. This does take some degree of uh, balance. So I want you to move really slowly. And in order for us to really connect to the core and strengthen this one area of the tummy muscle that we want to keep active during pregnancy for postpartum is to step down silently. So if you're not clomping down. So when you're ready, putting the weight into one foot, bring the opposite knee up as high as you can, and then slowly, whoo, I lost my balance, come down as low as you can into a squat. Opposite side, moving slowly with control. I have to focus on a drishti, otherwise I fall to a soft focal point down on the ground in front of me because it is a balance, it is challenging, and those legs, they're already fired up, right? So can you send it your breath? Your muscles, they really need your oxygen in order to function. So muscles in your thighs that are working hard for you, they need your breath. Your uterus is a muscle, so when you're in labor, it needs your breath. So breathe there. Good, keep moving through these sumo squats. Coming as low as you can, and as high as you can. I can hear Jasper sighing behind me. Sometimes I get so jealous when I look at him. I'm like, I want to just sleep all day on the floor. <laughs> Woo, okay. Back to focusing here. One more cycle to either side. Good. And then coming up through middle. Beautiful. Okay, take a little stroll to the back of your mat and genie squat your way down, reaching for the floor, come forward. And we're gonna come into this tabletop position. So I want you to, from tabletop to gently sweep your right foot around in front. And if you can bring it up in line with your hands, great, but keep it out to the right. It doesn't even need to be on your mat. Just keep it out to the right. And then from here, we're gonna settle the hips back Start to flex into your right toe, drawing the right toe up towards the sky, and then here, forward fold. Bow forward, let your head hang. Don't worry about if your back isn't straight, just let your head hang. Let your torso be really heavy. You're using gravity here and finding a big juicy stretch through your hamstring. Wherever you're feeling that challenge, breathe into it. Is it in your lower back, glutes, legs? One more breath. And slowly come forward. Sweep that leg back 
and we're gonna bring the left foot forward, same thing, way out to the side. And then from there, shift your hips back, flex your left foot, shining the toes up towards the sky, bow forward. Can you really let your head hang here? Good, one more breath. And slowly shift forward, putting the weight into your hands and release that leg back. You can give the hips a little swivel here. And come to sit on your bum. So sweep your feet around and come to sit in staff pose, extending your legs long in front of you. So sit up nice and tall here. Flex into your left foot and take that foot, placing it on top of the right thigh. And then from here, tent your fingers behind you. Inhale, lift and lengthen, really shine up with your heart. Your fingers, your arms are supporting you behind. So you're not using your tummy muscles here to gaze up lifting up through your he um, heart. And then if you want to, you can stay here, letting your left knee be really heavy. Or if you want to, you can start to hinge forward slightly. You won't need to go too far before you start to feel a juicy stretch up through your hip, glute and leg, wherever you're feeling it there. I still got my fingers planted behind me for support. I feel like I need that today. So I'm taking it. Go ahead and then slowly rise. Let's do the opposite leg. Gently release the left. Flex into the right foot, placing it on top of the left. Let your right knee be heavy. Tent your fingers behind you. Inhale, lift and lengthen through your heart center, opening up like you're opening up your collarbones. Hmm, wonderful. Feels good. And if you want to, hinge forward slightly. If you want to intensify the stretch. On your next inhale, slowly rise. Release that leg, give it a little shake out. And we are going to find a comfortable seat for Shavasana. Just two minutes here spent closing the practice, closing the class. So whatever comfortable seat that is for you, I want you to find that now. Feel free to move to a couch or chair if you want to. You can lay down, of course, wherever you can find a comfortable stillness. And gently close your eyes. Tab into your breath. We always move there with the belly breathing because the breath is always present within you. You always have the breath to access should you need it. So it is probably one of the easiest things that we can use to help that internal focus. So concentrate on inhale, inhaling and expanding the belly. And then exhaling long and smooth until not an ounce of air is left in your belly. And perhaps once you get that rhythm of your breath moving freely through you, you can bring in your mantra and repeat those words to yourself over and over and over until they become your truth.
thank you for sharing your practice with me today. Namaste.